Hello, good morning friends. Welcome back to your favorite channel Kodban Digest. Today in this video, we will learn what is microservice design patterns. I will show you the classification of microservices design patterns. We will understand the use cases and benefits of these design patterns. Later, we will discuss each of these patterns in detail. Friends, in the previous video, we discussed about monolithic and microservice architecture. Can you explain the difference between these architectures? Provide your answer in the comment section of this video. If you have not seen the previous video, so please go and watch that video. The link is provided on your screen and also given in the description section of this video. So just to recall, what is monolithic and microservice architecture? Monolithic architecture is a singular large computing process with one code base that couples all of the business logic into one entity and microservice architecture consists of a collection of small autonomous services for more information go and watch the previous video so friends here is the agenda of this video i will give you the introduction of microservice design patterns then i'll tell you how these design patterns are classified into different categories we'll understand the microservice decomposition pattern then we'll understand what is integration patterns that we'll see the database patterns and observability patterns and at the end we will see the cross-cutting concern patterns at the end i'll summarize i'll touch upon these patterns very briefly then i'll give you a brief introduction of our next video that is on decomposition design pattern friends before we proceed in this video i want you to subscribe my channel to grow code one digest family Friends, I'm creating a lot of quality contents for you, but I'm not getting subscribers. I want you to like, share and subscribe my channel so that I can grow Code One Digest family. Thank you. Let's go ahead and fire it up. Okay, friends. So let's start with microservice design pattern. A microservice architecture consists of a collection of small autonomous services. Each service is a self-contained and should implement a single business capability within a bounded context. Microservices have a positive impact on our own enterprises. Therefore, it is worth to know about microservice design patterns. The general goal of microservice design patterns are to reduce cost, increase release speed, improve resiliency, and enable visibility. These are design patterns for microservices, and those are divided into five different categories. And each of these categories contain many design patterns. We will see all of these design patterns in detail in upcoming videos. Microservice architecture have been built on a certain principle like scalability, availability, resiliency, flexibility, independent, autonomous, decentralized governance, failure isolation, auto provisioning, and continuous delivery through DevOps. So we have microservice design pattern to address the common problem of microservices with an industry proven solution in form of design patterns. If you see all of these design patterns are categorized into five broader group and we call it decomposition pattern. Then we have integration patterns. Then we have database pattern. Then we have observability pattern. And then we have cross cutting concern patterns. So we'll see all of these patterns in detail in the upcoming videos. So let's understand what is decomposition patterns category and what all different design pattern it contains inside this group. This pattern tells us how to decompose monolithic application into smaller microservices. This pattern helps us in breaking the big application into smaller modules there are various ways to decompose monolithic application and this pattern helps us in taking a decision how to break monolithic application for a given context decomposition pattern suggests the decomposition of monolithic application into services by applying the decomposition principles like decompose by business capabilities or decomposed by subdomains 
or decomposed by transactions and so on. There are six different types of design patterns fall in this category. So those design patterns are decomposed by business capability. Microservices is all about making services loosely coupled and apply the single responsibility principle. It decomposes by business capabilities. Decomposed by subdomain defines services corresponding to the domain driven design. Decomposed by transactions or we call it two phase commits. You can decompose services over the transaction, then there will be multiple transactions in the system. The strangler pattern mostly we work with the brownfield application, which are big monolithic application, legacy code base. The strangler pattern creates two separate applications that live side by side in the same URI space. Over the time, the new refactored application strangles or replaces the original application. Then next we have bulkhead pattern that isolates the element of an application into a pool so that if one fails, the other will continue to function. Then the last in this category, we have sidecar pattern. Deploy component of an application into a separate processor container to provide isolation and encapsulation. Now let's understand the integration design patterns. This pattern mostly covers the communication aspects of microservices. This pattern tells us the way microservices can communicate with each other and, and other systems. How to aggregate results from multiple microservices before sending it back to users. Integration patterns explains the messaging and communication between the various microservices. A connection between application via common messaging system is used to exchange data or invoke behavior using the messages of a predefined format. The messaging style maximizes the decoupling between the system not only for the interface perspective but also from a time-based perspective. So there are seven different design patterns falls in this category of integration design patterns. The first one is API gateway pattern. An API gateway pattern help to address many concerns raised by microservice implementation like single entry, proxy service, aggregate results, and security, etc. Then next in this category, we have aggregator pattern. This pattern talks about how we can aggregate the data from different services and then send the final response to the consumer. Third, we have proxy pattern. This pattern allow to get API features such as security and categorizing API into a gateway. Then fourth, we have gateway routing pattern. The API gateway is responsible for request routing. An API gateway implements some API operations by routing requests to the corresponding service. Fifth, in this category, we have chained microservice pattern. Chain microservice design pattern helps you to provide the consolidated outcome to your request. And a request processed by multiple microservices. Sixth, in this category, we have branch pattern. The branch microservice pattern is a mix of aggregator and chain design pattern and allow simultaneous request response processing from two or more microservices. Seventh and the last design pattern in this category is client-side UI composition pattern. Each section in the page will make a call to individual backend microservices to pull the data. This we call it single page application. Now let's understand what is database design patterns we have for the microservices. This pattern tells us about the data storage strategies for microservices. These patterns help us in solving the data problem like data synchronization, atomicity, acidity, and data sharing between the services. How can we ensure the data integrity in microservice architecture? How can we handle transaction across microservices? How distributed transaction works? So this pattern helps us in solving all these problems. This category defines the database architecture for microservices to achieve loose coupling 
DB transaction across services, data replication, data sharing, data integrity, and data synchronization. So there are five design pattern broadly in this category. The first one is database per service. This pattern says one database per microservice must be designed. It must be private to that service only. The second design pattern in this category we have is shared database per service. This pattern suggests sharing the database between the services. This may be working solution in few scenarios. Third design pattern we have is command query responsibility segregation. We also call it CQRS pattern. This pattern suggests splitting the application into two parts that is a command side and a query side database. The database will get split into two. One is for write operation and other one is for only for the read operation. The fourth in this category we have event sourcing. The event sourcing pattern defines an approach to handling operations on data by a sequence of events. Each event is recorded in an append only storage. Fifth and last in this category we have saga pattern. This pattern is useful when each service is has its own database and a business transaction spans multiple services. This pattern to ensure data consistency across the services. Now let's see what is observability design patterns. These patterns are more concerned about tracking and monitoring the health and the performance of microservices. How to get notified if there is a failure in microservice? Hence, we need certain guidelines to handle the microservices and its health. Observability design patterns provide visibility into the distributed system to help developers understand their application performance. Observability offers the necessary control to identify and address issue quickly. There are four design patterns in this category. First is log aggregator. This pattern suggests a centralized logging service that aggregates the log from each service instance. User can search and analyze the log. Performance metrics. This pattern suggests how to monitor performance of various microservices. It becomes critical to monitor transactions and send alert when an issue happens. A metric service is required to gather statistics about individual operations. Third, in this category, we have distributed tracing. This pattern suggests to have a trace ID for every incoming request to service because requests often span multiple services. Fourth, we have health check. This pattern suggests to have an endpoint which can be used to check the health of an application or a service. Now let's see what is cross-cutting design patterns. These patterns are other concerns that help us in maintaining the microservices. These patterns are not for the business logic, but it's a guidance for the best practices to create microservices. Cross-cutting design patterns focuses on other concerns like configuration, logging, health checks, performance metrics, service discovery, and preventing failure, etc. There are four design patterns in this category. The first one is external configuration. This pattern suggests to have environment specific settings in external file to avoid code modification. Service discovery pattern. This pattern suggests to implement a service registry feature that helps in service discovery and health check of the services. Third, we have circuit breaker pattern. This pattern suggests to implement circuit breaker to prevent cascading impact of the failure. To other services or modules. Fourth in this category we have blue green deployment pattern. This pattern suggests to create blue application that is new application in parallel to a green application that is existing application and then go live with the blue once it is ready. One more category of design pattern that we have is security pattern. Security pattern concerned about the security and the privacy of uh, services and one of the pattern that we have is access token design pattern. This pattern suggests to have token based authentication and authorization mechanism to prevent misuse of APIs and services. Okay friends, now let me summarize what we learned in this video. 
so we saw the introduction of microservice design patterns then i have shown you the different categories of microservice design patterns how we have classified into different categories then we understood what is a decomposition pattern how to decompose monolithic application into different microservices then we understood what is integration design pattern for messaging and communication purpose then we saw database design pattern which talks about what are the database strategies and architecture we should follow for microservices then we saw observability design patterns which is used for tracking monitoring alerting purpose of the microservices then last one we saw the cross cutting concern design pattern where we saw about health checks circuit breaker fault resiliency to prevent cascading impact to other services then we also touched upon security pattern we understood the use of access token to add authentication and authorization feature to our microservices friends let me know if you have already seen or used this microservice design pattern in your project or seen a scenario where this design pattern can be useful please provide your answer in the comment section of this video friends in next video we will discuss about microservice decomposition design pattern we will learn what is microservice decomposition design pattern we will understand what is decomposition by capabilities design pattern we see the use cases of decomposition by business capabilities design pattern and then we see an example real world example of decomposition by capabilities business capabilities design pattern so stay tuned for the next video and do subscribe to the channel if you are new to the channel to grow a code one digest family friends if you like this video so give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for the more interesting videos click on the bell icon for the latest video notifications and do not forget to share this video with all your friends and colleagues this is very useful information for students beginners and software engineers i am putting a lot of efforts in creating this contents so please help me growing the code one digest family please subscribe to code one digest channel for the latest programming and technology related videos thank you